Welcome back everybody. Part three of this GT40 budget build to get this Fox Body Mustang back on the road. I'm Art, this is Veteran Idiot, and I'm doing idiot things as always. Before I get into the, the stuff that needs to be done for this to finish it up and put it back in there, I have got to clean this mess up. I can't take it anymore. It is ridiculous. You can't work in this type of environment, even though I did it to myself. All right, so I'm gonna knock that out real quick. You guys go ahead, get comfortable, and ready for the show. Okay, I can't tell you if this is actually any better, but it feels a lot better. And having a clean work environment goes a long way for the mentality when you're trying to finish off a project. So where we left off last time was we got all the valve train in, got the preload set and all the rockers and the roller rockers ditched the guide plates for the uh, push rods since it didn't want to align with the rockers and these rockers are self-aligning so we just left them off anyways uh, where it comes in handy with those guide plates is at high rpm when you start floating valves where this rocker might come off the top of the uh the valve stem itself pitch over and then cause havoc that way at least it won't hang open so that's a good thing but you will have some issues and a bouncing around push rod in there but since they didn't work together, I couldn't space it out. Maybe if I had adjustable guide plates, then it'd probably work better. But in this case, I didn't have them and these are self-aligning and I doubt we'll see anywhere near like 7,000 7, RPM. Plus we're dual rate springs, so floating the valves. Less likely, I would say. So what we need to do today, this thing is get it ready to get some paint. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get those valve covers fitted up, get the intake manifold on, dress the front with everything that I'm going to paint in the Ford gray, uh, the factory gray color, the color that these uh, small blocks came in. And I think the big blocks too, but it was a gray from like, I don't know, mid eighties to 2000 or so before they started doing all the aluminum stuff. It was this gray color. And uh, that's what we're gonna end up painting this. I think it actually looks pretty good that way. So we'll get it all dressed back up, get all the parts, uh, uh, the accessories cleaned up. I'm gonna steal a distributor shaft out of one of these four distributors I got sitting over here. And then we're gonna steal the shaft out. I'm gonna put it down in here and make a homemade little uh, uh, oil pump priming shaft that's going to prime all the oil to all the places before we start really cranking on this thing. I got a new flywheel for it. <clears throat> new clutch is sitting over there. We'll throw those on after we get it all painted up. Hopefully we can get it stabbed back in here today. Not going to commit to that. Don't hold me accountable for the things that I say. But that's the plan. That's the hope. That's what we're going with. So might as well not waste any more time and start cleaning up all this crap over here. I mean, really, really quality parts and throw it back in this uh, beautiful little guy. And uh, hopefully we can get it started and running. Probably not this episode, sorry to disappoint. But this is a lot of work to get this thing back in here with all the stuff that it needs in the cleanup, properly cleaned and ensure that it's put together properly. So. Let's get started, clean up all this crap, paint this sucker gray. Woo!
primed up to the top here. Got oil coming out of all the rockers and push rods. So it looks good. I'm ready to start slapping the rest of this back together. I'm happy with the oiling thus far. Uh, and I'll be happy to turn this engine over and not be worried about it being dry in some areas and, and others. So I cranked over the crankshaft a couple turns and then reprimed it again just to make sure we were covered. And uh, I think that's just about the best we can do in this circumstance to prevent anything from just killing itself immediately when we start it up. So when we go to first crack this thing off, luckily with the roller cam, roller lifters, and even with the roller rockers, we're not gonna have to worry about doing that 2000 RPM break in for like 20 minutes or so. Uh, they're already good to go, so as soon as it fires up, it can sit there and idle. And the only thing that we got to worry about is breaking in the rings. Then we can do that once we get this all back together. It can take it out on the highway since I don't have a dyno and just run like fourth gear load pulls for some distance until we get them good and seated. But that's good enough for the prime. I'm gonna start throwing all these accessories on. Start cleaning up the intake manifold. It's all ready to get thrown back on. However, I want to hit it with some brake clean and scuff the actual surface uh, underneath. And I need to get some pads for that, some brake clean for that as well. And then we'll get on these valve covers over here who might have to be modified to fit these rockers. I'll touch on that as well. I also need to get bolts for those valve covers and nuts. So we're gonna go get that right now. It's kind of a windy, dreary day. But that's nice to have in Arizona every once in a while. Nice and cloudy. Ooh, hey girl. Been gone for a while, I haven't fired him up. Well, because it kicks ass, that's why. Uh, nice and full, good to go. It's all right, let's get out of here. <laughs> All right, I'm back and that's all cleaned up out there. Uh, now we can throw on the intake gaskets, get the intake, plenum them on, and then start working on those valve covers, cleaning them up, uh, figuring out where they're gonna hit and all that business. We may be good. I may not have to touch any of those ribs, but we're just gonna double check. I think the uh, baffle is most definitely gonna hit. But let's get this intake manifold on first, worry about the things we can worry about, and then go from there. Why? Just give me the razor. Seems I missed a couple spots. All right, so you guys know how it goes. Thick old bead across here. We're not gonna use the little gaskets that it comes with. Although I don't think this kit actually came with it. Oh yeah, it did. It came with the cork ones. They squirt out. I don't like them. They pop out, no bueno. And these are actually for a 351. So I think the other ones are in here somewhere, but we're not gonna use those at all anyways. So it'll get these gaskets up top and then it's gonna get a uh, nice little piece in here for the EGR holes, which this intake plenum does not have EGR. So that'll actually just seal that area nicely but i'm going to throw some copper gasket stuff on this because you know how much i love it and i don't like taking parts off ever again so whatever i did with it oh there it is all right those are all coppered up and then it gets these little guys in the center if i can find them here's one here's the other and these are going to be specific for the egr uh, because the hot air comes out of there real hot gases you know and stuff so we'll just give this a little and then throw it on. Got a little copper on here. Don't worry about that stuff. We'll be all right. Boop, right in there. And then boop, right in there. Now, big old glob of goop down the center here. Pretty sure I bought a new one. Damn, prepared, you know. I'm never actually prepared. I'm always going to the store to get something. So we're gonna sling a bead across here and we're gonna let it set up for just a moment before we drop that intake manifold down on top of here. 
Sweet Caroline. Meow, meow, meow. Got a little bit on the inside here. Don't want that to drop down in and wreak havoc on the oil pump or anything else like that where it could get sucked into any passageway. So I originally had this guy painted an aluminum color. I just got rid of all of that. That's why it looks the way that it does. We're not gonna throw the upper on, obviously. We gotta get it inside the car first. We can slap the lower down in place and get it bolted up. One shot, one kill. Oop. All right, bolts. what I do with the bolts? Got bolts around here somewhere for that thing. Over here? No, over here. What happened to my bolts? Come on, y'all. I don't know if I mentioned this before, we're actually gonna be using the um, Explorer injectors when we throw this back together. There's no difference between the two. One's just an updated version. Works with this A9L just fine. But the reason we're going with them is the ones that we had originally in the car, the original ones are like maybe 30 plus years old. And uh, I don't believe that they were firing well considering number one and number two looked pretty gnarly. May have even washed out that cylinder, undetermined. We'll go ahead and eliminate that factor. And since these, since these injectors are newer and look to be in better shape, we'll just go with that. All right, torque this bad girl down. Oh. All right, next. All the crap on the front. All right, so check this out. Got the water pump on and everything is, it's dirty. I remember I told you it's gonna be paint over dirt. Don't worry about it. But I put the valve cover on the driver's side and it clears in every aspect. Doesn't touch anything, gonna be perfect. I haven't checked the passenger side yet. But you know what, I wanna put this valve cover on and then I'll hit myself with the bad news because that seems like the intelligent thing to do. Delay the inevitable, or just hope that it's not an issue. I don't think it's gonna be an issue. I think it's gonna be good. We'll see. Like I said, I think that baffle is gonna be the problem. Throw this one on. I bought some nuts for this thing. So these studs have been a nice addition. Oh, it's beautiful. The valve cover's ugly. The fitment's beautiful. Get them new bolts. Hey, little fella. Watching cigarettes burn out. It's a shame that these are all gonna get painted over. They look so pretty. Picked up some of the uh, missing stud or bolts for the headers as well. So when we get to that point, we'll be good to go. Well, all the nuts I got were wrong. Shocker. Weird that we were in the wrong bin. Who would have thunk it? So we're not gonna tighten that one down just yet. So I don't have any nuts for it. So we're gonna see if that side clears. We'll run to the store, get some more nuts, and then we should be good. Maybe, maybe. Sad, sad the day. Washers fit. All right, let's see where this baffle ends up after I scrape off this gasket. Oh, this sucker is baked on there. I think it's been around for a day or two at least. Chris B. This is gonna take a minute. It is literally baked on. Intermission. All right, all cleaned up. Beautimous. Now, let's see. Let's get this rocker at its highest point. I think the only contact issue is actually going to be the poly lock, but let's get it all the way up just in case, so we know. Okie dokie, moment of truth. This is without the cork gasket, so it's gonna be like worst case scenario. Oh yeah, heavy contact. But where you say, I don't know. That's a good question. Right there, by God. There's a rib that runs down the center of this thing that it appears to be striking. 
let's take out this baffle, see what we got. Okay, so here's where we're at with this thing. I beat the piss out of this thing like it owed me money or as a stepchild, one of the two. Haven't figured it out yet. You have to shave a whole bunch of the inside off here and then flatten out the baffle over the top of it. Getting oil back in here is gonna be a little slow, but at least it clears the rockers and at least we're not gonna be sucking up a whole bunch of oil into the intake with that uh, port that goes into the throttle body. So this is what it looks like and it clears. So now we can throw it together. I'm gonna to go get some nuts after that and then we can finally paint this thing. Maybe. I'm hopeful. We have little copper fingerprints everywhere on this thing when we're done. All right. So the, this thing was absolutely full of aluminum shavings. So make sure you get all that stuff out before slapping this back on. Beautiful. All right, we are just about ready to start painting this mug. Start taping off all the ports, hit it with some brake clean to clean off all the oil and grease, and then uh, we'll go ahead and paint it. I don't need those bolts or those nuts to paint it. We can throw those on afterwards. The sun is going down and I need some light to dry this sucker. That's basically what I'm getting at. Try and scrape some of this stuff off with a brush. Tape her up. Well, it would appear that these do not. Good to know. Need to pick up spark plugs for a 98 Explorer with a five liter. So I'm finding out things so you guys don't have to with this swap because I didn't look it up beforehand. Factory 5.0 um, spark plugs for the E7 heads will not work. You're gonna have to use different ones. Mm. Roll it outside. <laughs> Get out of the way, parts and pieces I still need. Whoop. Ah, I'm gonna hose it off with the brake clean, spray it down with some spray paint, bring it back in. Just hang out for a minute, all right? Relax. This thing is a paint over dirt masterpiece. Beauty. So we're gonna let this guy bake for a little bit longer as it sits. And that way I can run to the store and get everything else that I'm missing after I wash my hands. But I'm gonna get those nuts. That way we can tighten down these valve covers. And now that it's painted, once it's completely dry, we can start throwing on a bunch of the other stuff. Uh, a lot of the stuff on top we're gonna have to leave off just because we're hooking up the chains to it to drop it down inside. But I can get most of the stuff on the front and actually I might wait to put that stuff on till it's in the car. So might be throwing this thing in the car as soon as we get back and tighten down these valve covers. That's neat. All right, well, I'm gonna get out there on the road, get some nuts, come back, get this thing in the car. Yikes. Maybe a little wipe down. Probably not but maybe. Valve covers are bolted on, secure. So I'm gonna start throwing some of these accessories on, uh, some of the heater hoses, stuff like that. Probably just this heater hose from the water pump and then pull it off on the cherry picker so we can put the new flywheel on and the new clutch and then should be it to slam it in there i cleaned off the threads on this make sure if you paint something you go ahead and do that otherwise it's not going to read ever again This one's always a pain to get on. That's why I'm doing it out here. It's easier if you get it on the intake manifold first. 
and then slap the intake manifold down on there. Otherwise it's a tight fit. By the way, these valve covers are real sharp. I cut the bejeebus out of myself earlier. Right across the cuticle too. Those are the worst. In like a day or so, it's gonna be burning like crazy. All right, the pain in the arse hose is on. And it was sufficiently a pain in the arse. So there's a ground point on this side of the block. Make sure you clean the paint off of that as well. So you get a nice good connection. Could also just put a piece of tape over it before you paint it, but you know what? Hindsight's 2020. Okay, let's get this sucker up on the cherry picker. Let's slap that flywheel and clutch on. Let's see if I can do this without scratching every friggin' thing on here. Anything on here? Because it looks pretty. It's in the air. It's kind of surreal. Just a swangin'. Now there's a uh, cover on the back of the cam. If you change out the cam, don't forget to slap that bad boy back on before you put the shim or dust plate in. You're gonna find yourself with one hell of an oil leak and a walking camshaft. It won't walk too far, but still bad, real bad, not good. Also doesn't hurt to sling a little RTV in there just because it's in a very hard place to easily fix if it starts leaking. Boops right in. You don't have to go crazy with it, just get it in there. You don't want to bump it right up against the cam. You have lots of noise, it's friction, all the kind of stuff that you don't want. Man, I'm excited to throw this thing in. PCV in here. Been working on this sucker for uh, a while now. Just a couple days, weeks, whatever you want to call it, a lot of time. Slap this dust cover on and then we can get our new flex plate in that business up there. It's got a little ding in her. Kind of straighten her out first. Last thing you want is this cover pinging around behind the flywheel. If you ever had that happen, you know exactly what I'm talking about and why it's the worst thing on the face of the planet. Especially when you got a new build engine and you're listening for knocks and the flywheel's going bing, 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 bing. Mm, mm, mm. Brand spanking new flywheel. She real pretty. Ooh, should pull out that uh, bearing. Before we go any further with this adventure, just gotta find my pilot bearing puller. This thing is our lifesaver. Better than using bread. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's plenty of videos up on that. About using bread. Get your pilot bearing out. Come on, come on. Had it, girl. She almost made me tell her twice. Like I said before, what with Ram clutches for this one, it's a decently uh, inexpensive upgrade. And this kit comes with all the business. Clutch disc, alignment tool, throw out bearing, and the pilot bearing should be in here as well. Let's bolt up this new flywheel. As always, you're gonna want a blue Loctite. These uh, flywheel and flex plate bolts, they love to rattle their way out and cause you an enormous amount of grief. Oh, you son of a biscuit. This Mustang is a 50 ounce imbalance, in case you were wondering. 351 can either be 50 or 28. This particular one I got behind me over here is a uh, 28. So when we ordered all that stuff to swap it out, I had a 28 ounce flywheel. Had to exchange that one back for a new 50. Now we're back ground zero, 50 ounce imbalance. Sweet, clean it up with a little uh, brake cleanage. A little wipey wipey. We don't get any hot spots and all that other business everybody hates. Chattering clutches. Ow! Oh, man. Getting tore up today, tell you what. Sweet. Now everything's bolted up. We're on the hoist. Clutches installed. Everything is ready as it can be to get dropped down into there and I cannot wait. But I am gonna wait overnight because I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna get some food for the first time today. 
We'll watch the Suns game, as always. And then we'll come back and we'll hit this first thing in the morning. I promise you, I'm putting it in tomorrow. I don't know if we'll start it. I'm putting it in tomorrow. You got to be happy with that sometimes. This has been a long journey. There's going to be something else that's going to go wrong. It's almost guaranteed something else is going to go wrong. I need to change that throw out bearing. All right. It's another day. Tours are done. It's time to go uh, put this thing together. Not the fingers, not the fingers. All right, let's do this. Okay, I'm sure many of you realize that I just can't leave that engine bay the way it is. It is absolutely disgusting. There's really not a whole lot I can do about it, but I am gonna scrape some of this crap off over here because I don't want to fall into my eyes. I actually do like being able to see. I know that's weird, but... Okay, so safety glasses would probably prevent that, but it's... But I'm gonna try and scrape off some of this stuff. Like I said, mostly around the K member and the motor mounts. Still gotta change out that throw out bearing. It's sitting over here on the toolbox, don't worry. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You guys just chill out for a minute. Watch me struggle. So in hindsight, it probably wasn't the best idea to scrape all that stuff off onto the ground where I'm going to be laying. But you know what? It is what it is. New throw out bearings in. I think we're ready to set this guy down in here. And actually I'm going to change out that filter that came with the power steering. I think it's loading up the pump too much because it's whining and there's no air bubbles in it. And I want to see if maybe that filter is just uh, either loading it up or starving the pump. We're going to swap that out. These gloves are terrible. Harbor Freight, not for the win. Now the trick is to do this without getting power steering fluid everywhere. And that in itself is definitely a trick. All right, friends, let's drop this thing down in there. Whee! I'm actually really excited about this. I don't know if I've told you this or not. It's been like a month or so that I've been digging in and tearing apart this thing to get it back in here. And I'm jaw jacking right now. I should just put it in. Oh, might be some interference with the hood. May have made the chain too long. Oh, just need a couple inches. Really, that's all we need. Just a couple inches. Yeah, there we go. That's enough. Oh, child, starting to look really good in there. Built an engine very, very similar to this for my Ranger. Pre-runner Ranger. Throw up a picture of that while you guys are watching me drop this in here. Hopefully not actually drop it. Oh! Oh! Easy. Easy. What's up? You don't want to go further anymore? Oh, I thought I'm freaking cracking concrete. Oh, oh, it's on the bumper. NBD, we can drop her down. Should pitch back. Oh, yeah. There she goes. All right, problem number one. We're on the transmission. Gonna have to jack her up. May have to pull the headers. Hmm. Okay, let's assess the situation underneath. But right now I think we are almost sitting on transmission. Oh no! I'm gonna have to set it down on the pan just a little bit to adjust this chain. 
needed to pitch back some. Almost in there. Struggling, yeah. bolts in the uh, top of the bell housing and we can walk that pilot bearing in still got to go back a little ways but it's in ish in ish don't have any bolts in the mounts yet let's not jinx it that's not wood what a pain in the arse all right so i'm gonna monkey around with this for a little bit and uh, yeah i'll see you in a minute Okay, I did it. We are finally in, bolted up to the transmission. Now I just gotta get these motor mount bolts in and then we'll start slapping the headers on. And everything else, if I can find the last two bell housing bolts, that would also be nice. It's too much to ask for at this point. You know, a couple weeks ago, I decided to give up drinking soda. I'll tell you what, I've never felt better. Colby. So we're all in there. Everything underneath is done. Um, super, super greasy. It was nice and fun. But uh, motor mounts are bolted up. Transmission is bolted on. That slid right into the pilot bearing. I was excited for that to just happen. If you ever fought with one of those, you know what I'm talking about. Bolted up the grounds, put the starter in. What I want to do right now is before I get too much into this is I'm going to prime the engine again and then I want to turn the key because remember in this episode the uh, starter didn't want to kick over when we were going to do compression tests. So I want to see if that's an issue before we get all this stuff bolted onto the front and then I got to start tearing stuff apart again. So we're going to hook up the battery cable on the back, prime the engine again real quick and then turn it over and see if it actually turns over with the starter or I'm going to chase something else going on with this. Hopefully it's not the computer. It would just be our luck if it was, but hopefully it's not. Man, I was worried about that one. All right, let's get back into it. All the accessories getting bolted on. Put my finger in there, see if I'm on compression. Nope, take her around. Ooh, coming up on compression. Can you hear it whistling? All right, that is 10 degrees for top dead center. Now I'm curious, what would you guys set your B cam for timing, for base timing? When I first fire this thing up, I'm going to disconnect the uh, jumper on the distributor. I'm also going to disconnect the idle air control, so I'm not messing with any of that stuff. I'm just straight engine setting the idle and messing with the timing. But let's find out. So it's saying that we should go somewhere between 12... 14, 15, somewhere around there, 12 if you're gonna spray it. But I think if we end up spraying it, we'll have the ignition module and everything else to help with uh, retarding the timing just a little bit, or pulling timing out just a little bit. But uh, we'll, go with, we'll go with 14, I'm good with that. I think if we go um, with the Sniper 2, we might do HEI or we might do the HyperSpark. To be determined on all that, but who knows? This thing, man, may rip 
as it sits. So may not be something we mess with altogether, you know? All right, distributors in. All right, Just start bolting stuff up. Now remember what I said, we're getting rid of these Mustang injectors, I'm putting in the Explorer ones, because I think a couple of these were really bad. Considering how the rest of the car was, I'd have no doubt that they were really bad. So I remember when I first put this on last time, there was an issue getting this sensor in. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin that sucker in, which I should have done before putting this distributor in. It's okay guys, we'll get there. Don't worry, we'll get there. All right, back in with the distributor. So here is the two injectors. Factory, Ford, HO, five liter injector uh, that came in on all of Fox bodies. This is uh, off of a 98 Explorer, um, but they are the same height and the same pounds. I think they're 19 pounds each and um, the difference comes in the nozzle. The, it's gonna be hard to see on here, but the Fox body has more of a, like a sprinkler head type nozzle where it um, hits the tip and then sprays out in a um, like circular misting. Whereas the, um, you may or may not be able to see it, but the, Explorer has four little holes in there and they spray out in a mist from those four holes. So that's the difference between the two injectors. These I think are completely wasted. And so I have these that'll work just fine. It'll go in here. I don't have to worry about all that business. So we'll plop these guys in. Missing one, what the frig? For real? No friggin' way am I missing one. I counted eight in my hand. Oh man, here we go. Oh, found it in the old fuel rail. Fuel injector rails are in place in doodle doodle doo doo doo. Also, these injectors are smaller and they're lighter. I mean, we just saved couple ounces there. It's probably at least a tenth on the quarter mile. Oh yeah! Bolt up some headers and then run our wires. Cool. Headers are tightened up. I need to go back and get two bolts. The ones that I got were too long. At this point, I don't care. We are almost there. I'm gonna throw the harness on the top before we get all everything else bolted up and then we'll do the accessories on the front, the upper intake plenum and then fire this bad dog off. Little bit of a rat's nest here. That's okay. You have to check every bolt. Whoops. A little knot here. You work on that. I'll get the other box. Sometimes we like it that way. <sighs> Actually really, really want to get rid of all of this fuel injection. I think it's super duper duper archaic. Not a huge fan if you haven't gathered that much. Just about there with the wiring. All right, I think we are actually ready for the upper intake manifold. Let's peel this tape off. Oh, do you have the time to listen to me whine? about nothing and everything all at once. I am one of those melodramatic fools, neurotic to the bone, no doubt about it. Oh yeah. Ooh, she pretty. Looking pretty Rexy. Can't say the other word. 
Somebody will turn me in for like trying to pick up old ladies or something. All right, so our intake air temperature, if you remember from one of our last videos when we converted this to a GT40 upper and lower, the intake air temperature is drilled into the plenum on the underside. Leaving the idle air control disconnected, Let's throw on the TPS. Mmm. Oh, yeah. All right. Curious how much we're going to have to adjust this TPS. Certain we're going to have to open the throttle blade for idle. However, it's just, it's just a baby cam, y'all. Shouldn't be too crazy. Put on the oil sucker 3000. So as I found out in the last one, trying to plug these holes for paint, the spark plugs are different between GT40 head and the E7 head. So make sure you pay attention to that. Just went and grabbed some spark plugs for a 98 Ford Explorer, which is what this cylinder head came out of. Okay, all the spark plugs are in. I'm gonna take some time, put on all the spark plug wires. And we should be good to get all the front stuff on. You ever wonder to yourself, how can I make my fingertips raw? I'd really like them to be raw whenever I work on stuff. I have the answer for you. Just do anything that involves removing or putting these separators on or off. Your thumbs will be absolutely destroyed by the time you get it done. Anyways, so all the spark plugs and wires, good to go. I'm gonna start throwing on all these accessories. I have no idea how I remember all this stuff goes back together. This brain, just not good at that stuff. But the, the pile is getting much smaller. All we got left over here is some radiator hoses and some mounts in the tubes. It's almost done, basically. Now if I can just remember what I did with the water pump bell. Is this what I'm talking about, about memory and all this stuff going back together? I can't even remember what I did with the bell for the water pump and I just took that thing off. I think that's it over there. Nope, that's not it. What in the hell? Here we go. Little bit of that thread locky. Anytime you can prevent something from just exploding all over the inside of the car, you might, should just do it, you know? Curious to see what kind of leaks we got and where they're at. It's all new seals everywhere, which doesn't always mean that there's not going to be a leak, but it should get us close. And close is really all we're looking for. I mean, perfect would be nice, but close is good too. Where did my, I don't know what I just slung. Hopefully I don't need it. Oh my goodness. All the accessories are on, belt is on, everything's plumbed. Just need to hook up the, uh, set the radiator in here, plumb those lines, and this thing is ready to crack off. I can't freaking believe it. Running out of daylight, so. Why are you leaking, bro? I think it's leaking because it knows I gotta lay under it later. Beautimus. Oh boy. I think that's it. I'm gonna fill her up with water. We'll throw on the uh, mass air and turn it over. Waste not, want not. Pretty sure I closed the drain on here. Yeah, we're good. So far, so good. Okay, fix up this wiring in here for the fans, and we'll be good to fire it up. It's taking a lot more coolant than I got out of it. Of course, I dumped a bunch on the ground. So here we are, at the end of one journey and the beginning of another. I would be 
line if I wasn't terrified to start this up. There was a lot of work to do all by myself on the floor in here. Uh, so everything is hooked up. Uh, I'm going to put the mass airflow on and then that's it. That's all that's left to be done. Left the intake air, uh, idle air control off and left the bung out of the distributor. We we're not messing with timing or anything with the computer. I'm going to adjust the idle to get it up and then we're going to take a look at the timing and we're going to let it warm up. Hopefully we don't hear any knocking or any clanking or anything like that and it just works beautifully. If you got wood near you, I would appreciate it if you gave it a wrap just for me. Let's do it. Okay, key is on. I'm going to see if I can bleed some of the air out of this fuel line. All right, there we go. <sighs> Nervous, y'all. Nervous. Hook up the timing light real quick and then we'll fire it up. Okay, here goes nothing. There's a chance we're still going through all the fuel. Let's give it another try. Let's see what we get. It says the timing's right on 15, 14 around there. I don't want to keep cranking on her. Let's pull a spark plug. See if we got fuel all over it. Oh, come on!